G'day Trailblazers, my name is Cam and in today's video we're going to walk through another SSJS problem. This time we're going to create a cloud page which allow us to search for a data extension and using some SSJS and WS proxy we're going to return back the data extensions folder location. So we'll begin today in the cloud pages. We'll jump into a collection and build ourselves a brand new landing page. We'll call this one the DE Finder. We'll go next, make ourselves a nice blank landing page and go save. At the same time, we're going to be using our quick development uh, trick here. So we'll jump into Content Builder at the same time. We're going to create ourselves a brand new content block and we'll create ourselves a HTML block. This one will say code here for now. We'll save this. I'm going to call this one the Finder script. I'm going to save that code block. And importantly, we're going to jump back into our content builder, go into our DE Finder script and copy the ID just like that. Jump into our cloud page and our cloud page is now finished. We can drop out that content block and I'm going to go percent percent equals content block by ID. Type in the ID and then close off our AMP script. I should be able to schedule and publish this cloud page and I should see my code here. Hopefully, hopefully, and good it all works. So I can publish my cloud page, which now means I can use my link at the top here to really quickly refresh my cloud page and check my code changes. So I'll try it out. My code here, my code is here. And go save and refresh. Looking good, it's all working. So for today, we're going to need to use some WS proxy and server-side JavaScript. So again, we can jump onto my blog page and get our try catch statement. So I can copy my main script piece here, jump into my code block, and there is my beginning SSJS script, your SSJS functions here. We're also going to need the WS proxy. So I might jump into the marketing cloud documentation for the basic retrieves in WS proxy. And again, we're going to copy one of these examples. And I do like this one here with the filter. So we'll copy this code and drop it also into our content block here. And now we have all the components that we need to build up our script. So there are two WS proxy objects that we need for today. The first one is the data extension object, which of course we're going to search for the data extensions containing the name. So we should have the name field there, perfect. And of course we do our retrieve function, we can make sure our filter is not equals, but we'll use the like function so we can find all data extensions that contain a name that's like a certain name that's provided. Additionally, once we do find our data extension, we also don't need to use the data folder object. A data folder is the folder or the uh, category ID the data extension is living in. We can of course cycle through our data folder, we can use the ID of the folder and the name of its location to find the exact folder path that our data extension is sitting in. So let's start off by jumping into our WS proxy. Let's make ourselves our first data extension call. You can see from our example code we do have most of our code here. All we're going to need is the name, customer key, and category ID. So we can drop the is sendable, don't need that. We're going to use the prox call on those fields, and now we're going to return back where the property, of course, will be name. That's going to be like the name that we give. Now, for today, I'm just going to call it Cam. We'll find all data extensions in my instance that are like Cam. Perfect. Once that's done, we're going to call the prox retrieve function on the data extension object with these columns, these ones here, and this filter, this filter here. Perfect, now once that's uh, returned, we should be able to use a write function to write back those results. So let's try it out. We'll write back uh, the output here. Now we do have to make sure that we string a five so we can read it on our screen. So uh, we'll go string if I, and we're going to output the response. So we'll give it a try by saving our code and jump back onto our cloud page and go refresh. And there we are. There's all the data extensions in my instance that contain the word cam. I can see test campaign, for example. Perfect. If I check out the structure for this data, I can see, of course, the name is there. I should also have a category ID somewhere in here as well. 
The category ID is going to be the folder ID that that uh, data extension is sitting in. So I, key, I can use the uh, category ID to now search the data folder. So to address the category ID, let's try that by going back into our code and we'll try and get category ID. Now, if I check out my data extension object, I can see it's called category ID, capital I, capital D. So let's address that. Now, of course, we do have multiple returned values. So I'm going to write a for loop. So to write our for loop, we can jump over again onto one of my blog pages. And we can check out my server side for loops. And I'll just use this really easy for loop here. So I'll copy that code and jump back onto my content block. I'm going to say for i is equal to zero until i is going to be equal to the length of our return. That's results, I'm pretty sure is the object we need. I can check that on my cloud page. It is in fact results, perfect. Results, that's gonna be the length of that results, oops, length. So for as many objects as we return, we're gonna cycle through it. Now we don't just want to return the count, I do wanna return the actual uh, category ID. So we'll try it out really quickly here by going the results for I and the object of category ID. Just like that. So let's try it out and see if I can get back all my category IDs. Go back onto my cloud page and press refresh. And there we are, there is the category IDs. It looks like most of my data extensions with the word cam all come from the same place. That's right, we can see it's working, so we can keep moving forward. So I'm gonna jump back onto my code now. Since I have the category ID, my next step is to make a call to the WS proxy to get back our data folder. So. I'll no longer write that function out. Instead, let's go on to our next proxy call. I can copy this same proxy piece, not the prox call, I've already set my new uh, WS proxy. So just the below fields, and I'll paste it below here. And I call this one calls B, filter B, and return B. Now for this one, we need the data folder. Now all we need for this one is gonna be the name and probably a few more fields. In fact, we probably want the parent folder of the folder we're checking on to see if it actually sits within a parent. So we use the name, the parent, and the ID. So I'll turn back into our code. We want name, yep, got that. We're gonna get back from our data folder the ID. And then we don't return category ID, we return the parent folder. I think it's parent folder ID. So we use parent folder dot ID. So name, ID, and parent folder ID, perfect. With the property of the ID will be equal to the returned category ID, this one here. And the problem is though, we're not sure how many times we have to cycle through this function to call our data folders. Of course, we'll be calling the data folder object. We're not too sure how many times we have to cycle through it. So we do have to actually write a different function here because we don't know how many times we have to go through. The best use case for this one is gonna be our while loop. I think I in fact do have a while statement. I've got four loops there, for in do while, here we are. So as you can see, for a value a variable, we can do something while something is true, or not true, should I say. So I copy this do statement and go back into my code. And within our for loop, we're going to write our do statement. So what we're gonna do is for every time that our parent folder is not equal to zero, because the topmost or the parent folder of all the data folders in Marketing Cloud has the ID of zero. So as soon as we get to zero, we'll stop this function. But until we get there, we'll keep running it. So do this thing until we hit a function. Well, let's start to populate this one out. We're gonna to want to have a few variables. So I'll say var, I'm gonna try and look up our find category ID. And that to start with is going to be what we're searching for. So it's going to be our category ID here. Looking for, we're going to try and find that. Let's probably want to try and populate out our folder path so far. So go var folder path. Now folder path to start with is going to be the name of the data extension that our original data extension is actually in. So I can probably copy this and it's going to be the name of that first data extension. Just like that. That'll start us off. So. We're gonna keep doing this until the category ID that we're trying to find is not equal to zero. Because once it is equal to zero, we're gonna stop. 
So then our do function here, we have to write our next uh, WS proxy call, which is all this one here. So we'll throw that in there and then let's try and write it out. So our filter calls will be those. Our filter will be where the ID is equal to equals and it's equal to our find category ID. That is the category ID we are trying to find next. We'll then do the call, returning back our calls B and filter B on our returned B. And once we've got that, let's try out our call. Now, of course, we want to make sure that we get the right call first. So as we cycle through this, we're going to be checking on the next parent folder ID to see if it's yet equal to zero. If it is, we have to stop. So once we've made this call, I'm then going to set my find category ID to be equal to the returned parent folder ID, which I should be able to get by going that function there. It's going to be the values, of course, because there's a AWS proxy call retrieve. The results, it's going to be the result, the only result that we get back, so result zero. And it's going to be the parent ID. We know that's the parent folder ID. Now that should be our new category to, uh, to find. If it's not equal to zero, we keep going back. But as we cycle through, we're trying to flesh out that folder path. So I'm also going to want to put in here a folder path function. So we're going to say the folder path is going to be equal to, and we should be able to capture this brand new result here. That's going to be the name, I think, of that data extension. So we get the name. We're going to add it to some text. I think that's the usual folder hierarchy methodology. And then add it to our previous folder path that we've already set up here, which was the name, just like that. And I think that should do it. Now, once that's all done and we finish off this while statement, we can then print out our folder path. So I'll copy my write function from up here. We should be able to print out the folder path for that data extension. So it should be something like that, our folder path. Now, of course, we could put our data extension name. So we could say de and then the name, which we don't have a variable yet. Let's do it up here, actually. We'll go var de name is equal to cam to start with. So we'll be searching for de name. So we can then say that the de of de name is in folder, folder path. And then of course we return our folder path, just like that. All right, let's give that a quick go and see what it looks like. We're not gonna stringify that, we don't need that function anymore. All right, let's give that a try. We'll go save. All right, saved, go back to my function here, press F5. Oh, how good. So apparently, we've got a folder called test campaign that is, or a folder uh, D called cam, there's a data extension called test campaign in my data extensions folder. Well, let's try it out. Go into my data extensions. Maybe I'll just duplicate this window. I jump into my data extensions. I'm hoping to find, and it loads a data extension by that name in that folder. So it's called test campaign in data extensions. All right, test campaign. Yes, it is. Perfect. Try something else. What about this one? We've got a cam SF contact in Salesforce data extensions. All right, Salesforce data extensions apparently. And cam SF contact, perfect. So there we are, we now have an output producing the name that we searched for and the folder location. Great. Okay, so it's pretty good so far, but there's one downside, which is currently the DE name is a static field. Which is no good for us, it means we have to jump in here every time and modify our script just to search for a data extension. So let's modify our code to use another function so we can actually use a URL parameter on our cloud page to search for a DE. So I can jump in to my SSJS documentation and there's a great function here called the get query string parameter. I can copy that function, I can jump straight back into my code, I can put in a new variable. So rather than saying the DE name will be cam, we can instead say the DE name is going to be request parameter. That's going to be the uh, key of DE. So I'll try this out. I'll go save. I can jump back into my cloud page and I can try a different URL. So I might say in this, uh, in this case, we'll go question mark DE equals and we'll say uh, campaign. Since that campaign worked, 
And there you are, I have campaign. What about D equals SF? Perfect, lots of SF data extensions and apparently I've got one here, which is my update contact in my demos DE. All right, let's have a look. In my demos, do I have an SF update contact? There was a full location, demos that I contact, there it is there. And there's one there. I have a look at my demos. We have, there it is there, update contact. Perfect. Okay, so I've cleaned up the code a little bit now. And so if you've liked what you've seen so far, you might try it out for yourself. Got a bit of code here, which I can copy and I'll jump into my GitHub gist. You can paste our new code here. Of course, use at your own risk. It's an SSJSD search and we can create this one as a brand new gist. Done. And I'll put the link to this one in the video description below. All right, and that'll do it for today's SSJS workshop. If you enjoyed today's video, please let me know with a comment below and give the video a big thumbs up as well. And don't forget to subscribe to the channel so that you are notified when I release more Salesforce Marketing Cloud videos.